I'm Mary James with the Passive House Accelerator, and I'm here with Mark Attard of Hammerwell, and we are in Louisville, Colorado. Mark's home was very close to the Marshall Fire, which burned through the area in December 2021. Fortunately, he had done a Passive House retrofit on his house before the fire, so we're here to talk about what he did and what the effects were from doing that retrofit. So Mark, you want to tell us a little bit about how you heard about Passive House and why you decided to do this Passive House style retrofit on your home. I had heard about Passive House uh, because I was working uh, for a company at the time that was involved with a project uh, known as Geos down in Arvada, Colorado, which was a net zero community that was using Passive House methodology to meet that net zero requirement. So I had been working on that and, and, and had been talking with the developer of that about Passive House and started getting interested. And so I took that training in 2008. Ever since then, I've kind of been seeking ways to advance Passive House throughout the community, through the work that I've been doing, et cetera. One of the things that I felt it was important for me to do was to do a retrofit on my house. My house is very typical of what we see in Colorado, it was built in the mid 80s to the bare minimum code that, you know, th they were allowed to build to at the time. And when I did my preliminary blower door test, I was at a 17 ACH. So it was v quite leaky, two by four walls, so very minimal insulation. And the first thing I tackled was kind of the low hanging fruit, which was my crawl space. I didn't have to worry about demoing out walls or anything like that. And I added, um, an R30 of insulation to the floor of the crawl space, a proper vapor barrier mechanically fastened up the, up the wall. I added R20 of insulation to the walls and I air sealed the, the sill and cantilevers and overhangs. Then I moved on, our windows were a single pane aluminum frame window. So, you know, just to give you an idea on a 40 degree day, it might be 45 degrees on the inside surface of the window. It wasn't particularly much warmer in, on the windows inside than it was outside. So I said, okay, I gotta change the windows, but if I'm doing that, I might as well look at what I can do to the, my building envelope. I didn't wanna tear out drywall on the inside. We we're living in the house. So I decided to add continuous insulation to the outside of the building. So when you added continuous insulation, I don't know how much you were thinking about fire hardening at the time, but you chose an insulation that help, that is more fire resistant than other insulation types, correct? Yes, that's correct. I, I chose uh, mineral wool. Our mineral wool has a ignition point of like 2,700 degrees, so it helps tremendously during a fire. The other thing that I did is on the finishes, as you can see, is I added metal uh, for the finishes and the wood that I did add, I pre-burned using a process called Susugi Bond. I use it primarily as a bug deterrent, but it also has the added benefit as also being um, a, a more fire-wise product. This is a do-it-yourself product. I went out and bought the wood. I burned it myself um, using a process which I found on YouTube. That allowed us to get a look that we wanted and get some of the benefits of the fire hardening as well as the insect hardening aspects of it. And the beauty. Yeah, and the beauty. And also I've noticed just looking at your house that there aren't a lot of intrusion points for embers. That the way you've designed your eaves, you don't have big eaves hanging over up there that um, where embers could collect and catch the structure on fire. As you'll see in, in our neighborhood, there's similar houses to mine that do have eaves. By me adding the continuous exterior insulation, I eliminated those eaves as, as a byproduct of that. But also, um, on the lower section of my house, I've, I added a, a full cavity of cellulose insulation. So there is actually no air movement in that part of the, the attic space. And then on the upper part, I needed to make that a conditioned attic. So I closed off all of my uh, vents and I um, brought my insulation layer to the outside of the roof so that I, can I could use the, the um, attic area for a place to put my ERV. You switched your entire home from fossil fuel to all electric, correct? 
I did, and I uh, switched to a um, heat pump furnace. Um, there, there, there's several uh, manufacturers out there that will make a one-to-one -one exchange. So I had a typical gas furnace that was laying horizontally in my crawl space, and I um, swapped that out with a like-kind unit, uh, but the source of heat and cool is electrical, and it's uh, using an uh, air-to-air heat pump. Electric heat does not require any ventilation. It doesn't produce any CO2, so there's no, there's no reason to have uh, what we call makeup air um, for those gas-fired appliances and, um, and the same for exhaust. So all of, the, all of those um, intrusions were covered up and covered over. So again, it, from a, from a firewise perspective, um, it, it, the more you can minimize those kinds of intrusions in places where you know, you can get a vacuum effect and suck embers down into your house, the, the, better, the better off you're going to be. You did all this retrofit, finished it in 2021, in October, and then the Marshall Fire came just two months later and came very close to your house and, in fact, burned a house down just right across the street. Can you talk about how your house fared during that fire? The fire started sometime in the morning uh, between like 10 and 11. By 11.30, um, you know, my wife was sending me pictures and there was so much smoke you couldn't even really see houses just a few doors down. And then on the national news, we literally saw our neighborhood. We saw all the fire trucks set up down there and it was, everything was in such a glow. We, we thought for sure our neighborhood was completely gone. We, we had no expectations of coming back to the house the next day. We walked in from down the end of our cul-de-sac and you know the house across the street from us was still smoldering. There were different um, uh, properties around that had you know had had grass fires that, and there were still some things smoldering all around. Um, and you know obviously there was a lot of toxic smoke and, and air and things of that nature. We walked into our house, zero soot, zero ash, a little bit just right at our front door, no smoke smell at all. We couldn't stay there because they had, all, had turned all the utilities off as a safety precaution, but they turned the electrical back on the next day. And so we just drove right in, turned our ERV on. It was the middle of winter, turned on our heating and cooling, and have lived here ever since. Unfortunately, for our neighbors who hadn't done this kind of work, they had tremendous amount of smoke um, uh, damage. Uh, uh, they had ash and soot all over their house, and all of that, it has a certain toxicity level. So everybody, everybody needed to get toxicity tests, have people come in and mitigate. Some people had to go as far as tearing out all the insulation in their house, replacing it, redoing the siding on their house, redoing windows. Some people were a little bit more fortunate and were able to just get away with maybe um, replacing insulation in the, in the attic or whatnot. All these houses were probably around a 17 ACH or so. So the air tightness was not really, not, really not existent <laughs> at all. And your home was tested. Yes. and and. Uh, for toxicity. We, it was tested for toxicity and we didn't have any toxic levels of um, air or ash in the house. That's so impressive and not just impressive but for those of us who live in um, areas where we're susceptible to fires which is a large portion of the western half of the United States it's uh, it's inspiring hopefully to do the work needed to be able to have the outcome that you had. You know, I did have a lot of neighbors that I counseled after um, fires, and um, you know, although they didn't feel like that they were in a position to go to the levels that I did, a number of them that were replacing windows, upgraded their windows, and actually found that getting a good triple pane window didn't necessarily cost more, in fact, in some cases cost less than just a standard um, builder grade window that they were looking at. It was a tragedy and a lot of people had to deal with a lot of things, but I, I think that there's a lot of more awareness of 
what can happen to your house in any kind of natural disaster. And so I, I think people have become much more aware in this area of, of how their houses are built and, and demanding better than what they've had come before them. Mm -hmm.